the uh, other vehicles in the building. The title of the sermon day is The Price of Fun. When I think of Memorial Day, I think of some of the things that we've talked about, but I also think of the sacrifice that was made so that we could enjoy. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying and thinking of Memorial Day as a day of fun and enjoying the blessings and the, and the fullness that we have. So um, one of the things I have found, though, in the years of talking to adults, especially, I'll ask, what do you do for fun? You know what the number one response I get? I hardly ever have fun anymore. And that always just bothered me. Because I have an axiom that I believe is biblical that says you ought to do something every day for the pure fun of it. And uh, so, um, real quick, real quick, I know this is interactive and they may not can see you, but what do you do for fun? What? Boat? What do you do for fun? What? Ride horses? What do you do for fun? I, I heard shoot something. Shoot pool. I heard throw knives. Take a nap. I got. I got. And, and, and I'm got getting the ball rolling, which is what I'm doing. I've got some some list of, of just things that came to my mind of of fun. Y'all to have fun. Sports. All types of sports. I, golf, tennis. You can go biking. You can play on team sports. Volleyball. You know, there's all types of stuff. You can enjoy it if you want to. And then there are hobbies like crafts, make something, be creative. Some people enjoy and have fun baking. Um, Needlepoint, which drive me crazy. Gardening, collecting things. You can have fun collecting things. I've seen people who were looking for a particular stamp or a particular coin or a particular uh, model of car that they were after. Uh, and and just, just when they got it, oh, they were just so excited and had so much fun. Take a walk. I love to, to, to walk. We're going to go hiking tomorrow. I love to hike and, and just be out in the woods. I, I enjoy that. Eat and drink something you like. <coughs> Even if they say it's bad for you. <laughs> Salt and fat and those things in the right proportions are good. <laughs> If you don't have salt on it, it means usually no taste, no fat, means no flavor. So every, you know, every once in a while, eat or drink something that you like. Read a good book. I don't like to read unless I'm interested in the book, but when I find a book that I, uh, the topic is something I love, I love to read, believe it or not. Watch a good movie. Listen to music. Enjoy a sunrise or a sunset. Um, I don't know if you've ever gotten up. I know a lot of people when they go on a beach trip, one of their things is, I want to get up just to see the sun. I know uh, we took a trip a couple of Christmases ago, took the family um, to, um, where was it? Punta some somewhere in Mexico. Uh, and we got up on that Sunday and uh, watched the sunrise and had a, a service that was just so much fun and enjoyable. Get together with friends. Just hang out. A lot of young people just want to come and hang out. We had a um, going away thing for uh, Guy, uh, Gilly Ermal, who was with Scott and Blanca Wales. He's flying as we speak back to Brazil. Uh, and Julia is going to be heading back to Spain here on June 4th. But we had a party at our house. And the young people, they came. We had about 30 teenagers. They just wanted to hang out. I had to get them to play stuff. I got them to play basketball, and you know we had a. In fact, we had so much fun that we were playing volleyball, and it was got dark. And they said, "Can you pull the car around and turn the lights on?" So I pulled the car, had the motor running, and we played with the car light, played volleyball. We had a blast. Get together with friends. Here's one of my favorite things: make a baby laugh. You cannot have fun when babies are laughing. I mean, you just cannot help it having fun. You laugh, they laugh. And one of the things that I like to do in playing with kids and, and getting babies to laugh is you can let the kid out of you again, which is so much fun. I enjoy, I'm still a kid on the inside. I just got an old body. To to but anyway, make a baby laugh. What? Now notice the wording of this. 
play a good-natured joke on someone. I'm all the time picking up people. I try not to do it if, if they, you know, would get offended or, or something by it. But I always like to come up with punny things or some ridiculous thing. Or sometimes Jenny and I, and I know some of my sons, we just like to debate for the fun of it. We like to debate. And so, for the fun of it, play games, all types of board games, video games. I was talking with uh, uh, Zach uh, today, and I said, what have you done for fun this week? And he said, well, there was this old video game, and I beat it. I beat all the levels finally. I've been 200 and something hours, was it, that it took it? <laughs> but he beat the game, and that was fun. Ladies, this is for you. Go shop. Now, if you're a man and you have fun going shopping, fine, if it's... Cabela's or maybe one of the sports good mother may give you there, but go shopping. And then I put this last thing in the list could go on and on. Do a good deed for someone. I know I have fun doing things. One of the funnest things I've done in my life is someone at, a, at another church, when I was at another church, gave me $5,000 and said, I want you to distribute it to whoever you want whenever you want, but I don't want them to know who it's from. And so, for a month or so, people would be sharing different things, and I would come across. I'll never forget, we had a single missionary lady, Lee Nall, who came and spoke. Uh, she was a missionary with, uh, to Israel. And uh, she was talking about a need uh, because her car, her old station wagon, was breaking down, and she needed to visit her churches, and it was going to cost so much money. And she, after church, because she and I are dear friends, and she said, do I need you to pray about something? She said, I need about $1,600 for a new transmission in this old station wagon. And I looked at her, and being the, the fun joke part, I looked at her and said, Lee, I'm not going to pray for that. And she was a little shocked by it, which is what I wanted. That's my fun. I said, the reason is, is God's already answered your prayer. I have the money and I'll write you a check for it right now. And I told her the, the story, didn't tell her who, that God had already supplied the money and I could distribute it out however I wanted to. So a lot of things to be uh, fun. Uh, I want you to look at the fact, if you would put up Proverbs 17, 22, you can look at it in your Bible, you can just look at it. There's a price for not having fun. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. Do you know that God's Word says that if you don't know how to have fun, it will physically, mentally, emotionally affect you in a negative way? Some people go to doctors constantly, and part of the reason is they don't know how to have fun, and their body chemistry reacts to that fact. They don't know how to think fun things. Life for them is a heavy weight to bear. And they're all time doom and gloom like schlep rock with a cloud that fall down. That's a cartoon, by the way, for you younger people. Uh, going over his head. God says that when you have fun, when you enjoy life, when, when you do something every day, your body actually produces the, they've shown this, called a K-enzyme, and it is the best antibiotic. It's better than anything science has ever come up with. And guess what? The body don't adapt to that antibiotic. The germs, man-made antibiotics, they come and adjust to in superbugs. But a merry heart does a medicine that sin cannot penetrate, but a broken spirit dries the bone. Your life may be dry. Your life may be mundane and meaningless, and you dread each day, and there's not purpose and meaning and fun and joy and abundant life, because God said, I came to give life, and I came to give it more abundantly. But you don't know how to have fun. And there's a price to pay if you don't know how to have fun. Uh, go, if you would, into to Genesis. 131. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I want you to understand what fun is. I, I wrote it down this way. Fun, enjoying the goodness of God that he has put in life. That's what fun is. God designed life for you to enjoy. When he created 
the world and the universe and put Adam and Eve in the garden. He designed it to be fun land. The only job they had was to pick the fruit that they ate, which ended up being a bad choice that they made to pick the wrong fruit. And we're going to see that in a second too. But I want you to see, if you don't understand that God is the source of fun. God is the source of fun. He designed good. Everything that He made is good. Very good. And so, no matter what your particular way of enjoying fun is, and you ought to have a whole bunch of different ways of enjoying life and finding fun and doing fun, what you're really experiencing is that God is good. And He wants you to enjoy life. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so, we're going to see that this price, go to, if you would to the next verse there in James 1.17. God's Word says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And coming down from the Father of lights with Him is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God has designed your life with opportunities every day to choose fun. Think about that. Every day, God has packed in there fun in the backpack of your 24-hour day. Whether you take it out and unseal it and eat it up so it feeds your soul is up to you. But here's the challenge. You have to see God to fully enjoy, fully have the fullness of the fun that was packed in to that situation, that circumstance, that, that meaning. God always has this for you. And I want to add the price of this fun. Because we're going to see in a moment that there is also a counterfeit fund. And there's been a price that, is that God has had to pay to restore the ability for mankind to have fun in its life. So let's go to the cost that Satan has a counterfeit fund. Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw the tree that it was good for food, this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Now, let's stop right there before we go through. If God made the tree of knowledge of good and evil, was it a good tree? Yes. She could see the goodness in it. This is a good tree. And then it was pleasant to the eyes. The fruit was very appealing. Have you ever seen a really ripe red apple? I love them. In stores, a lot of times they color them and bite into them and they're not what they look like on the outside. And I hate that! Because there's the promise of that red apple being juicy and sweet and good. They saw it was good and a tree to be desired to make one wise. In other words, God has reason in this tree of something that will bless and bring good into your life that you can enjoy. The knowledge of good and of evil. But what Satan tries to do is this. He tries to take the good that God designed and take the fun out of it. And take the fun out of it. I know that this is a little older group and normally you don't hear a preacher say this from a pulpit. Sex is fun. It's supposed to be anyway. Eh? It's between you and your baby. But this world is taking something that is good and designed by God and is taking the fun out of it. Mick Jagger in his song wrote, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Why do people have affairs? Because sex in and of itself, if you don't see God's purpose in it and God's design in it and the goodness that God put in it, you pervert it and the fun goes out of it. 
And you have to do all types of perverted things to try to pump fun back into something that this world is torn apart because Satan has counterfeited it. And there's many things like that. Human relationships. Your own identity. I love being me. I don't want to be a woman. No offense to any ladies. I don't want a sex change. I'm very happy with what God's done. This world, she did eat and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat. And we know what the result of them making a choice of something that God designed to be good, but to do it and to use it in a way that you don't see God in it. You're actually rebelling against God in the doing of it fun goes out. You know why? It was good until they took a bite. And when they took a bite, what happened? Their eyes were opened and they began to realize evil. I'm evil. I got to pull away. I got to hide. There's a problem. All became dark and, and, and ugly and awful. This world is medicating itself to death because the fun has gone out of their life. That's why people drink to the point where they can stagger around and act like idiots and can't stand up. That's why people shoot up with drugs that are going to kill them and they know it, but they, they chase something to get up. I, I've told this story once before. When I was a, a young teenager, we'd go into the, the jail and minister, and there was this big drug dealer who had been arrested and so in getting ready for his case. It was about five months that he was in jail, in this local jail. And I visited him every week. And we became friends. And I remember asking him, I said, I understand why you sell it. I understand the vast amount of money that you've described to me and things like this. I said, but you use it too. I said, you saw what it did to, to the people that you sold it to. Why in the world would you take it to yourself? And I'll never forget his words. Wow, I had a flashback and see him over the bars. He said, Dwayne, he said, while you're high on that, that chemical, he said, you don't have a problem in the world. And you're free for a moment. And I looked at him and I said, no, you're not. You're just under an illusion because you're going to come out of that illusion created drug thing and you're going to have more problems than you did when you went up and said obviously you're right he said but for that time you think that everything's great and then he said in time you have to take it just to feel normal this world is in need of fun because Satan has sold a bill of goods to this world of saying, chase this thing, chase that thing. This will make your life worth living. This will be fun. This will bring good into your life. And yes, everything has an element of good in it because God designed it that way. But when you begin doing things that God designed to be done one way and you begin to change it now, the fun goes out. The satisfaction goes out. And what was designed to bless your life and make you feel abundant and full and overflowing becomes a curse to your life. Because there is a price for fun and Satan would want you to pay a false price. <laughs> if you would go to Hebrews 11, 24 through 26, we'll continue to say this. By faith, Moses... When he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming, that means counting, that the reproach of Christ is greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. You know what the reward is? The reward is the Holy Spirit giving you joy. I'm in a sin-cursed world and there are things that I have to deal with that God never would have had me have to deal with if sin had not come into the world. But God promises 
that He can, in every situation, give joy if I am in His presence. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. In any situation, I can say, God, let me see Your goodness. Let me see You at work, even in the midst of this hurtful, painful, evil situation. Bring fun back into me. Bring joy back into me. And so Moses said this, and this is the choice that you and I as Christians have to make. Are we going to chase the pleasures of sin for a season? Or are we going to say, following Christ, even if people think I'm crazy for doing it this way, the living this way, making these choices this way, that God is going to give me greater riches. How much fun would it be for you today to win a check for a million dollars? God has greater riches than this world could ever for the fleeting moments give you. If you have respect unto the reward, God gives life and He gives it more abundant. I don't want to live a sinful life. I have a blast living the Christian life. And if more Christians had a blast living the Christian life, there would be more unsaved people who say, I want to smoke what he's smoking. I want to eat what he's eating. I want to inject what he's injecting. I want to spend my money and time and energy on what he spends his money and time and energy on. Because he's got something. Do you have fun in your life? If you have fun in your life, you're going to be a testimony to the goodness of God. And people will be drawn to you. You know, people a lot of times are repulsed by Christians. Why? Because we don't understand what true Christianity is. It's walking with God in such a way that your life is so full and overflowing, it just flows into other people's lives and brings good to them. And they wonder, how can I have this in my life too? That's what Moses saw. Going on next verse in Ecclesiastes. Solomon is writing here. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom retained with me. Notice what this, this is where the world would say fun is. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labors. Next verse. And this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought. And on the labor that I had wrought to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. Can I tell you, fun for fun's sake is wrong. Fun for God's glory's sake is right. When I enjoy eating a good meal, I do it to the glory of God. When I make a baby laugh, I see God's goodness and joy that He puts in, in an innocent life. I, this world, as I said, God's put good in it. And as we sample the good but don't see God, you'll end up with a vexation of spirit. We have, in America, we have more money, more free time, more things to entertain ourselves with. We've got devices and TVs and robots, and we've got we've got we've got more play toys than any society that has ever existed on the face of this planet. And we have more people who are dissatisfied. Why? Because unless you see the goodness of God, unless it's about enjoying God, unless God is at its forefront, fun ain't fun. Going on. Uh, go, if you would, to the uh, Ecclesiastes 24 through 26. Here is the price of fun. And we're going to look at these verses. But before we look at these verses, I want you to understand the price of fun. You and I were rebels against God. You and I were born sinners that says, God, I don't care about you. I care about fun. I care about me. I care about me enjoying what I want, what I have. I'm going to run my own life and I'm going to have fun in my life. Stay out of my life, God. 
And there was a God who paid the price so that He could come back to you and say, I can offer you an eternity of fun. And it can begin the moment that you admit that you cannot produce in your life what only I can do. That there is a sin problem between you and me. And all you have to do is swallow your pride and admit it and acknowledge that I paid the price for your sin. And I want to bring fun back into your world forever. Why push a God like that away? I don't... It is a demonic blindness. No sane person would choose to reject Jesus Christ. Here's why. There is nothing better for a man that he should eat and drink and should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This I saw that it was from the hand of God. God wants to give you fun. This day and every day. For who can eat or else can hasten thereunto more than I? In other words, here's what I want you to see. When you have fun, you realize how fully blessed you are. Did you see what Solomon said? I am. Who's got more to be thankful for? Who's got more to enjoy? Who's got more fun in their life than me? I love being me. I know some of you think, who would want to be you? I don't care what you think. I love being me. I don't know anybody on the face of the planet or in the history that I would want to change places with. Can you honestly say that about your life? This is what God brings to your life when fun is back in your life. If not, you're going to have vanity and vexation of spirit and you're just going to keep chasing fun. And you're like a dog trying to catch his tail. You're just going to run around and circle. We have a heritage. Not only do we need to this Memorial Day remember the price that God has paid for our fun, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the heritage of others. We have the heritage of the pilgrims who came to this world and who were willing to suffer in those early foundations of these colonies. And by their own words recorded, they understood and said that they were but stepping stones for the next generation to come and build. They understood that they would not reap the benefit of their sacrifice, but their children and future generations would. I thank God for those types. I thank God for the people who back in the early formation of this country understood it needed to be one nation under God. Understood that we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And understood that God was at the center of fun and, and a fullness of life. And put into our Constitution laws that would govern according to the law of the true and living God. I thank God for people who are willing to stand up. I thank God for those revolutionary people, I, I often think about Valley Forge. What it took World War II. I recently saw the movie on TV, Hacksaw Ridge, about the guy who wouldn't take up the, the gun, but would rescue people. I know that that was based on a true story. Thank God for those in the past and in the present. Right now, there are men and women around this world that are keeping extremists that want to destroy America, want to come in and blow it up, change it, destroy it, and they are standing in the gap so that you and I can enjoy and have fun and freedom this Memorial Day. And we need to think about that. and We need to be grateful Memorial Day for the cost that is paid for our fun. What this brings you to. Also, before I get to, to the what it brings you to, there was one more category I forgot that I wrote down later on. You just don't have to be a war hero to be grateful and thankful. I'm thankful for the memorial of my mom my grandparents, people who stood in the gap and taught me right and sacrificed so I could have. 
I didn't realize we were poor until I was 14. And I never forget that my mother gave me the freedom to play sports as a young man. And I know I probably under different parents would say, son, you need to go to work and help the family. We didn't have any money for education or anything like that, but God provided. I think you need to be thankful for those that have sacrificed for you that have gone on. But this brings you, if you have fun the way God's Word says, it doesn't make you a party animal, though you ought to party all the time in the right way. Here's what it brings you to. Romans. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. You say, what, what, what do you mean it brings us to this? If you understand how fully blessed you are and the price that is paid for your fun, you will have a heart of thankfulness and gratitude, and you will express it. Today, you need to take some time to express to God how thankful you are for what He has provided for you in His sacrifice and the life that He's given you. You need to be thankful for those veterans and those people who have sacrificed, parents, grandparents, others, so that you can have the fullness of life that you have. If you don't have a thankful and grateful heart, that tells me, you don't have God in His proper place. And if you don't have God in His proper place, you're not having fun, you're chasing fun. And you're never going to have it. Not the kind that God says is lasting and full and abundant and doesn't cause you to turn around and curse it because it vexes your soul and spirit. If you don't know the Lord, your first step of having fun is to appreciate the price that you paid for your sin and your heart. Is your Lord and Savior for us that know Him as Savior? Snuggle up to Him. Say, God, what have you got for me today that's fun? Help me to see you in it. Help me to enjoy it and soak it in. Lord, help me to be fully grateful to you and those around me that are tools in your hands. Let's pray.